is not garment. I would not be using it for garments, but for footwear. Yeah, so, uh, the panels we can do the embroidery and then we can deliver it. Only the panels if you want. Okay, okay. So it's better. We'll connect offline then. Yes, Thank and we you. are we are also exporting all over the world from last thirty five years. Okay, that's great. That's great because then you know all the norms etc. Because exactly. I would be doing for Italy and Europe. I'm sorry, that's, America. That's great. Wonderful. Because Canada doesn't need so much. Doesn't okay? They take apparels, embroidered yeah. yeah, apparels, but not the footwear. Agreed. We are getting into apparels also since 2019 end, but like it seems we started at a long time, so it's a bit slow. But we should do it well soon. Mm. That's true. Okay, everyone, thank you. It's four o'clock here, and uh, <clears throat> we're starting our uh, webinar. Uh, can everybody see me? Is am I am I? You yes, see? you're very much visible and audible. <laughs> Okay, perfect. Uh, so what, one second, just getting ready, getting set up. Okay, fine, perfect. Okay, great. So thank you all for being here. Uh, welcome, welcome from Fashionably Inn. Um, so Fashionably Inn, we organize B2B trade shows. We've been doing this for many years. Uh, I can see a lot of common faces who've been coming to a lot of our shows, you know, our, our webinars, which is great. We basically work on connect, connecting people in the fashion and lifestyle industry. Each of our webinars have different uh, segments. So we, we, we specialize in different segments. So sometimes it's uh, fabric, sometimes it's embroidery, sometimes it's footwear. We try to get into the, to the, the basic, uh, you know, get into the sector, you know, get deep into the sector. Uh, we basically were organizing shows in London. Uh, we've been doing it for many years. Sadly, uh, it's, everything's shut right now. Hopefully, crossing our fingers, we'll be starting our shows again in, in September and moving forward, uh, you know, forward with this COVID thing goes down, you know. So till then, we're making the most of the virtual world. It's great that uh, it's great that we uh, it's great, you know, because it's, you know, from sitting in one place, you can connect with so many people from all parts of the world, which is great. And, and these webinars are working really well because I get a lot of the feedback from people and they are making connections, there's business happening. So, you know, so this is somewhere where you get a chance to, to uh, you know, to showcase your company, talk about what you do, uh, get insights into the business, uh, see trends, meet buyers. Because see, for example, right now I see Alka's here. Alka's a buyer who had contacted us uh, just a few, few weeks ago based in, I think, we're in California, right? Yes. Yes. So, and I remember. Such so she said to us, uh, she's looking for great, good embroidery suppliers. And and from that day, I said, okay, when we do our next garment and trims uh, uh, seminar, we're going to make it a focus on embroidery. Uh, obviously, because remember, we always focus what the buyer wants. You know, so we go, we go like from the top of the pyramid. The buyer wants this, and then we just say, okay, these are the events that we focus based on that. So, uh, with much, with, without much ado, I'm going to have Alka. You can start. Uh, you can start introducing yourself, and then we'll start talking to all the other panelists and uh, see what the best comes out of today's webinar. Thank you so much. So, Alka. Of course, thank yes, thank you for putting it together. Uh, so, my name is Alka Tolani, and our brand is called Tolani. We are a brand from Southern California, and we've been in business for about 70, 17 years now. Uh, so our brand initially started with, you know, with a line of scars pretty much. And it got a lot of press because of its uniqueness. And then we, you know, within one year in business, we started doing ready to wear and we continued and we got a lot of success in ready to wear. And, uh, and it's been 16 years in, you know, women's apparel. And we have, of course, accessories is our division. Also, we have the apparel division. And then we had, we have a couple of other brands, you know, like, Mahila in for Canada or, you know, uh, Tolani sells in Europe while in Australia, South America, while Tolani Collection sells on the TV channel. So our line is quite, uh, you know, diversified in product and in our distribution. So, so uh, we have- Sorry, sorry to cut you, cut, cut you off. Do you okay. feel today that people, because you're, you, you're, you have a brand, you've had a lot of experience. Do you feel that embellished goods, uh, garments with embroidery, embellishments, 
are selling more because people can actually see more value in those garments? Uh, you know, uh, I know one thing. Embroidery is selling, right? But at the right price. And they, they, be, they need it elevated. It's not the run of the mill, right? You don't want a regular flower placed because you've seen, seen that, been there, right? You need novelty. So the embroidery has to be elevated with a clean finish because so many times I end up working with a factory and I kind of give them a package and one way or the other, the embroidery just is not right, number one. Number two, you need CAD facility. You need the factory that has, you know, that you have a CAD artist who can actually develop the whole garment on a CAD, you know, gone are the stages, gone are the days where you actually make it from scratch, show the whole swatch, no, make a CAD first, uh, you can tweak it and then as per what the buyer wants and then you kind of make the whole garment, you know, of course bodies we all work with, you know, I send the factory the bodies I want to work with because we are not very young, we are 30 year old plus, you know, based company, but embroidery is a, is a, is a category we really have a lot of demand for right now because prints we already have or a combination of print and embroidery, you know, so that's where we are. But in US, the economy is growing. They are, you know, they, we all think there's, there's going to be inflation this fall, but uh, the economy is really growing. You know, uh, we all are vaccinated. At least 60% of us are all vaccinated. In the next two months, I think next two or three months, my son who's in his 20s, he's also vaccinated. So the youngs are all getting vaccinated now. So, and there is a big demand in US right now, right now. It's like we want product right now. Thank you so much for your inputs. I just want to get to some of the other audience people. New York Embroidery, I see you here. Thank you for being here. Hi, how are you? This Hi. is Milad representing New York Embroidery Studio. Sorry, I'm late, but... No, no worries. Thank you so much for being here. Can you tell us more about what you do and what way, what, what, what kind, what... Because I, uh, I see really cool designs behind oh. you. Well, I that's our... Really wallpaper and the it's graffiti with like embroidery patches. This is our showroom. I'll show you a little bit. Uh, hold on one second. Wow. That's it. I want a showroom, I want a showroom like this. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm so lucky to be working for a studio like this. Um, anyway, uh, our studio, we basically can do any type of embroidery from like machine embroidery to hand guided machinery to anything hand beading in the studio. We also, our facility, we're able to do laser cuts, um, printing, uh, 3D models. Uh, we're literally a studio for any fabric manipulation, basically. We're able to develop anything you want. And we're based in New York. Is it all done in New York or you do outsource it? We're in New York, we do it in New York. I mean, we also, for big production, we work with India and with China but we're able to develop, a development is all happening here in the studio in New York. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. And any, 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 any idea you can give us about trends? Because I remember like embroidery, back in the day, animals were really hot, uh, abstract was really hot and, and a few years ago. What do you see as the trends moving forward with uh, embellishments and embroidery? I've been seeing a lot, when it comes to artworks, I've been seeing a lot of like tropical uh, embroidery happening. A lot of people are getting into that. Uh, when it comes to techniques, I mean, you still have the traditional techniques, but uh, I believe people are just trying to move forward with like a new novelty technique, like trying new embellishment. They don't always just want to stick with the thread work embroidery with a couple of beads on top. So we have like a variety of like samples that are developed in house that inspire people to like try new things. Cause you don't want necessarily something you can get at, I don't know, I don't want to name brands, but like nobody wants like a basic look anymore. Everyone wants a purpose for what they're buying. They don't necessarily just want to spend money on another floral thread work dress. It has to mean more to them and it has to have something that's so special that they can't get it anywhere else, correct? So I think that, that people are trying new developments, trying new techniques just to be, um, you know, to be different. And especially with all the sustainability world we live in right now and trying to be uh, uh, better at like shopping people are trying to shop the right item at the right moment. So would you say your business is more like 
and embroidery or is it machine? What is your- We have your both. We do both. Uh, we get a lot of demand on machine, I have to say. Uh, but we're doing both and it's as equal now. I think a couple months ago we have said it's only machine. Now I see more uh, in hand beading and uh, hand guided machines as well, not just uh, digital embroidery. So when you look at your end customer, are you doing that? Are you doing it for stores, bridal boutiques, or are you doing it directly for the end customer? Who, you, who, is, who is your customer? Well, we work basically, our major customers are like the fashion brands, but in the past year, since the fashion industry has been hit really bad, we've been getting a lot of like more like homeware type of uh, customers like CC Barfield or, you know, it's like more uh, placemats, pillows. A lot of people are developing that now. Now that people are like hosting more at home and not like going out anymore like they used to, I feel like this whole industry is growing. People are taking care of their houses more. And that, that's what I've noticed. Um, and um, no, we do get different type of customers, but fashion is mainly our biggest, uh, fashion designers are, are the biggest customer to us. So, so um, new, uh, new, uh, why don't you leave your contact details in the chat? You know, yeah. Uh, anyone? Are you? You know, people looking want to reach out. To yes. You can reach out because that's what we do at Fashionably, and our goal is for people to connect. Yes. When people connect, we get happy because that's when that's when we know we've done a good job. You know? Yeah. So uh, I'm just going to move. I'm going to get back to you because I have a few other questions that I want to get back to specifically on how embroidery has moved towards home recently, like what you were saying, yeah. how people are doing wallpapers of embroidery like yourself, like behind you, placemats, you know? Yeah. This is something which is growing and, and, and this is something that we want to really uh, understand more yes. about, you know? Absolutely. Okay, so just moving to some of our other uh, other audience people, or other audience members here. I see plat Platinum Plus, is that, did I say that right, sir? You gotta unmute yourself. Platinum Plus, four ten a pearl. Platinum Plus. I'm Bobby Rose. Okay, so tell us, so where where are you based, sir? We're based in um the United States, Baltimore, Maryland. Okay, and what and what and what do you focus on? Man, we do a variety of things. Uh, we are uh, my my main uh focus is embroidery, but we do screen print, we do puff screen print. I did cut it, Leah. Did cut it, yeah, Leah. I like to mix the genres. Like right now, we're focusing on mixing vinyl with embroidery. Oh wow, that's interesting. Vinyl. Like we do a lot of the young, we got a lot of the young crowds. We do a lot of um, music artists, um, actors, and things like that. Yes. Sort of like we like to do clean embroidery. There's a carpet. I'm, I'm just going to ask everyone to unmute themselves just to make it easy for everyone. And then I'm just going to unmute you because I think there's some disturbance happening. One second, mute all. Yes. Okay. Back to you, sir. Yes. Yeah. Please go ahead. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're we're based in all Baltimore, Maryland, inside the U.S. We do outsource some items. Um, as you can see, I'm working with the 15 uh, needle recoma here. Um, this is one of my machines. We do have uh, a factory where we have maybe seven, I think, uh, six heads. Um, <clears throat> and we basically cater to young, I've been embroidering since I was maybe 10, hand embroidering, wow. you know, so and now is, we is just translate to the machines. So your focus is mainly machine, not hand. Well, I specialize in hand, but with today's climate, all the young people, they want things quick and fast. So the machine will be their thing. My hand embroidery tends to be a lot more expensive. And is that, is that done in, in the United States or do you outsource that to other parts of the world as well? Everything is done here except the digitizing. Um, shout out to P, the Quartz Digitizing there in Dubai. They do all of our digitizing. But we design and manufacture here from uh, hats all the way down to sneakers. Okay. So, so can you just, before we move to some of the other audience, what can you tell us are some of the trends that you've seen, you know, post-COVID with the embroidery and what, what are people like asking more about? Today's climate, they want big colors. It's all about big colors, big color arrangements. Like like uh, New York said, they don't want the dead um, embroidery anymore. Like just a plain flower or the, 
they want to be razzle dazzled. And that's one of the reasons we incorporated vinyl, like for instance, the halogen vinyl, to give you that extra splash of color inside your embroidery. So that's where we um, experiment went now. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much. So, and what, what was your name, sir? My name is Bobby Rosini. I'm Platinum Plus of Pearl. You can get us online at uh, www.platinumplus410.com. Okay, great. Thank you. Leave your contact details on the chat. Uh, you know, we're just going to get to, so I see Rain Tree Embroidery here. How are you doing? You got to unmute. Hi, Tarun. How are you? Great. So Rain Tree, just to give you a little brief, Rain Tree specializes in hand embroidery. She has a factory based in India. She's London based, India based. And she's going to tell you more about what she does. Uh, anybody looking for very high end embroidery, she's the right factory for you. She doesn't work with everybody. She's very secretive about the business, but only to the high end and the luxury segment. So tell us more about what do you, what do you see as, as trends and things moving forward in the industry? Um, in all, in all honesty, I don't really see because my clients are diverse and they're from, you know, different parts of the world. I think most of my clients have always had very clear design for what their collections require. I've never really seen a generic trend for my clients. The people I work with, I think they come with their own brief, they come with their own design selection. And then we kind of either, you know, show them what we have in our archive or we basically develop designs for them. Um, I mean, it's, it's it, I mean, due to COVID, obviously it's been a really slow year, like a lot of production had slowed down, but um, I think we've been very lucky from June, July of last year, I think certain parts started opening up, which kind of got us going again with work. Um, I think right now, um, embroidery i think you know it, it is what it is i think people are waiting for the market to open up a bit so in regards to current trends i don't think i can really answer that i think you know i think it just depends on the designers and and what they're asking for i do however see if i do have to say a bit of a shift i think what's interesting is there are some of my designers who work in the higher end luxury end kind of also interested and keen in interiors. And that's something I've noticed recently. Like I think there's definitely, and, and not only, but I think people are trying to kind of branch out. People are trying to find different formats for how to use design. And I think that's a super interesting uh, um, trend if you want to put it into a trend that that for me is an interesting way to go forward in design to not really Put yourself in a um, in a box, but to see how you can move with design through through the spectrum of you know. Uh, so what you know what you just said about about uh, about interiors and stuff is exactly what New York embroidery said a few minutes earlier. I'm so, so sorry. Okay. So you know it's it's great because I just feel like you know at Fashionably and we make connections and New York embroidery. I feel like you and Rain Tree can be a really good you know a really good uh, you know a good, really good match you know because. I just see a lot I've, of energy. I was just going to say, do I've we worked with you in the past. Is that Milad? We've worked, we've worked with you at Floritel. Yes, I've worked Milad, with you in the how past. Nice to how see are you, you doing? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you. I totally agree with you on like the whole um, a homeware or you want to call it interior. People are literally, I, I totally understand it personally. Like I would want my home to be developed in a nicer way now that we spend our times more at home. I mean, I'm hoping things will Absolutely. open up and we'll start dressing up more. But I agree, there is definitely, people are trying to branch out of their like regular, especially fashion designers are literally trying to develop more uh, products mm -hmm. for like their, their house, their interiors and stuff. So yeah, I agree. Exactly, yeah. because yeah. now they're staying at home, so they look at the home and they start doing it. So we've had such great, uh, you know, success Interest. in doing those high-class uh, home embroidery stuff, you know, the furnishing and everything. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's coming I, up. I also, think, I, I also think it's definitely, you know, you have more time and you want to spend a little more time, but I also think people are being a little more... Uh, conscious of design in itself 
I think I think yeah, exactly. just put, I think this year has shaken everyone up in so many ah. different ways. You know, all of a sudden the shop shut down. You know, there's no retail, there's no customer base. You don't know what's going on, and I think. I think a lot of people have reverted are really really thinking of e-commerce a lot more but also how do I take my design and kind of give it reach a broader audience and I think like like, like we all said like obviously fashion where you're going to go but I think people are also really trying to think in a broader way of what their talents how far can they take their talents in whichever area you know and I think that's right. why interior is coming strong because I think it's all a combination of 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 everything that everyone's saying right now. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, you are more free mind, and then you can you're if you're exploring, you know, when you're sitting, oh, this corner should have been like this. This stuff should have been like this. So there's been more growth in the home home decor and home furnishing segment yeah. than any anywhere else as of right. now. Correct. But I'm hoping, I'm hoping that things will change. I know hopefully the Met Gala will happen in September. And as New York Embroidery Studio, we've always been a big part of uh, uh, helping these big high-end luxury brands make these like beautiful uh, gowns for the Met Gala. So I'm thinking fashion is going to get back to where it used to be by September for sure. Like, I think we'll see it again. Like, I know right now with India, and I'm so sorry, and I'm, my heart goes for everybody there with what's yeah. happening with COVID. And um, I can't even understand, but I know you guys are basically the core of every beautiful embroidery that happens here. Yeah, yeah. you're nice. so right, so right. But let me tell you guys one thing. It, your home is right now. For the last eight months, it's all been home. But going forward, remember, you have six months, six more months for home. And then your demand for fashion goods is going to go this direction. Currently, your fashion goods have already elevated. So right mm -hmm. now, we get phone calls from mom and pop, the specialty stores saying they want product now. Catalog companies want product now. There are no trade shows. If you have a relationship with those guys, they want product now. So yeah. uh, it's all. Awesome. It's awesome. And remember, you have to elevate the product. It's all color. Like I would think one year earlier before COVID, all of us were looking at, you know, trend forecasting companies, looking at the market for direction. Now the design's coming from within. There's nothing, no place else because last year was so odd for all of us. So, you know, there were no stores to go to. Trend forecasting companies didn't have a great sense of direction. So all the design is what's coming from within. So spring 2022 is going to be every designer is going to have their product so different from the other. Correct. Yeah. Absolutely. And it, Absolutely. And it's all color. Everyone wants color. Happiness. I totally agree. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so because there's seen so much of uh, dullness in the environment and so much of you know sad news all over so the color is what is lifting everybody up yes it's joyousness it gives you happiness right yeah, yeah. it is so, my customers have been you know like I, because i also do designing for them a bit but they also use their own r and d's and they've been coming up with such amazing some colors which we used to discard earlier are now coming up so well so right. well Yes, I mean, you'll be amazed. The fuchsias, you know, yellows and oranges never sold in US. Today, yeah. we, we, our number one color, I mean, literally, not number one, exactly. maybe one of the top colors is yellow, orange, pinks. I mean, I couldn't even believe these three colors would be selling yeah. so much today. You know? No, I'm telling you, I've noticed like more tropical, like type of uh, embroidery or like artworks. Like people are definitely going for that whole like happy, bright, Nobody wants to be in that like negative energy anymore. It has to be like happier uh, and exactly, uh, more exactly. positive. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And this summer, you know, it gives you a sense of happiness around you. It's a sense of, you know, feeling that things are moving forward. It just yes. uplifts yeah. you in every way. That's why all these colors, which were not acceptable earlier, are like the go-to colors now. Correct. It's kind of, you know, uh, fashion is kind of the manifestos have changed so much over this last year. It's amazing to see the direction it's going. Yeah, up. exactly, exactly. 
so my question now to uh, is is to uh, New York Embroidery and Platinum Plus. I want to ask both of you, what is your take on on celebrity endorsements and how does that work with you know with embroidery dresses and celebrities? How can you tell us how that process works? And how do you do that? Sorry, I couldn't hear the last sentence. So just tell us more about how do you work because I know I know embroidery is very directly related to celebrities and to some extent when it comes to the red carpets or doing really high-end dresses. You know? So can you just give us a little more like how do you approach celebrities? Tell us more about some of the celebrities celebrities you work with, some of the stuff okay. that okay. Well, obviously we are a studio, so we basically work with like brands, uh, not necessarily with uh, direct to the actual the celebrity or to the customer. I mean, we do have some clients that will come and like to do something for them custom made, but most of the time it's done via the actual designer themselves. They bring the product. We actually never know what the end result is. And it's always a surprise and we're happy to like be surprised every time. Um, I don't know how endorsement, how much uh, these influencers are really helping the industry personally. Like to me, yes, I love social media. Yes, I love all of that. I'm not sure how much they're helping us as studios to like move forward and grow. I think, yes, it's beautiful. It helps the industry maybe like just get more attention on the fashion industry, but I don't think it helps necessarily the studio itself. That's my thought. Black like it's more awesome. for their followers and the brand itself, but not helping necessarily the studio. I think studios will, it's a more to me personally, now that we have like a merrily election happening soon in New York, I would want more someone that like a mayor to help out with the industry. That's what I care about. I don't necessarily care about what a celebrity is wearing to help my studio because she's they're not doing that they're not that's not the voice that i'm waiting for to to help my you know growth that's my personal opinion yeah thank you so much and platinum plus any of your thoughts with celebrity endorsements and any of your ideas you have to unmute unmute sir all I can tell everybody is like, like the young man said, social media is good for us, but it's not great for us. Mostly I use it for advertising. Um, yeah. Reach out to a lot of, I know a lot of people aren't into hip hop. Um, New York is right there in the middle of it. Um, reach out to some of the artists. These young artists, they're their own um, labels, their own companies. They're spending big money. Yeah. Believe it or not, they're spending big money. So if you reach out to them, it may not be your forte, but it will fund your mission. So you just you just showed us a design of like an orange sweatshirt or something with an eye. Well, what was, I just want to understand our pricing just for, so the audience can understand more about pricing. Can you just give us some idea? All right, this jacket, now we don't do stitch count when we, when we price for our customers. We don't do stitch count. This jacket here has over 400,000 stitches from the front to the back. This is a colorful eye I just had designed because of the coronavirus. It's wonderful. It's, I love it. I love it. <laughs> because of the coronavirus, I thought of the eye as all seeing towards the future. Um, so how, how, much sell, you, how much do you retail something like that for? This hoodie actually sells on my website for, uh, well, it's on sale now for 65 but the regular price is 140 okay, And that's we for approximately, we didn't sold probably about 400 of them. Wow. Wow, that's incredible. That's great. Yeah, that's that's my Picasso. I call it the Picasso hoodie. <laughs> it's love full it. of colors. It's an artwork. It's a painting. <laughs> so, uh, Neha, I know you. I know you believe like how embroidery is an artwork, you know, and how it's like like exactly what Platinum Plus just said, you know, like it's my Picasso. Can you tell us more about about how you how you design and what is your design process and how does that happen? You have to unmute. Yeah, sorry. Um, so we actually uh, have been in embroidery for the past, I think, 20 years, nearly 20 years now. Um, but very specifically hand-driven embroidery um, and then hand-machine-driven. So, you know, unlike um, um, 
forgive me, what was uh, Mr. Platt, what was his name, the gentleman's name, who just showed us the orange sweatshirt? Uh, sir, could you repeat your name again, Platinum Plus? Okay, okay, so anyway, so and the point is we, we, we focus really on hand embroidery. Um, it, it's, it's, uh, it's a really old, anyone from India will understand the process. It's, it's, it's culturally, uh, historically, it's, it's one of the most ancient um, uh, modes of design. And, you know, obviously it's been carried forward. And then, um, so basically we just uh, still pretty much work with that, but of course, We've now found ways because price points matter. You know, there are very few clients now that can basically absorb a embroidery cost of five hundred dollars okay. because you're retailing at five thousand um, dollars. So, because of obviously the commercial aspect of what we're doing, and at the end of the day, and I, this is the one kind of motto I have with my clients. You know, we've got to be transparent about costs because. Um, you know, you've got to be very clear about what our budget is. I mean, it sounds really crass to kind of almost call it a budget when it's handwork, but we need to know how many man hours we can invest in a garment, you know, and actually because I will say, you know, because of the way because the way has, it has a very specific philosophy of how we work. We rather work with less clients, but really build a long-term relationship because we need to understand what our client needs, both aesthetically and both price point wise. And, you know, I know everyone doesn't want to talk about commercials right in, at get-go, but because of my previous experience, I know spending three weeks on a garment, which is going to end up not getting you or your client anywhere is a waste of time for everyone, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's very, uh, you know, very early on, we're like, you know what, we kind of study our clients, we understand where they're at the, in the market, we understand kind of where we have to fit in. And design wise, we, we, we make shifts to the design. So I would say 80% of our work is still hand embroidery driven, but now we combat it with machine hand embroidery, which is still very hand oriented. It's still a lot of artisanal work. In fact, Hand embroidered, uh, machine embroidery is almost harder to find specialists than actually people who actually work in the trade. And we've introduced computer embroidery because sometimes the price points just have to meet the price points. But the only thing with computer embroidery is you need volume, which is something we can't, you know, most of my clients don't have massive, like huge numbers because they are luxury. So it's about playing with different techniques for whoever needs basically supplying something to everyone you know it's a mix of everything depending depending on what you need um exactly. but yeah so i mean I, I don't know if that answered your question but basically that's how we work with most of our clients with prices thank you thank you yeah. so now, now just to get to some of the other audience members here uh, i see and and fax embroidery you were saying something uh, just before we started about how co how covid has impacted your business can you tell us more about what you do and some something any and some trends or anything please i'm just a little fish here in the market uh, we do a lot of custom design and uh, embroidery uh, we do uh, mainly garments um, covid really hit us hard uh, uh, it darn near put me out of business. Unmute. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. There we go. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you heard any of that. Um, but uh, where I'm just a little fish, we do uh, custom embroidery for uh, garments. Uh, a lot of graduation stuff going on right now. But... Um, COVID hit us hard. Uh, it nearly shut us down. We uh, are starting to get the orders coming back in. People are very interested in uh, unique designs. And uh, well, I'm just kind of excited to be a part of it. So just can you give us some idea about pricing? Like just a just general idea. How do you price your stuff? So some of the other audience members can understand. Pricing, we uh, typically go by how much time we put into uh, um, this, the stitch out and uh, preparing the garment. Uh, 
just for an example, for I don't have any minimums, so I get a lot of small orders, and those always cost more than the, the higher volumes. Uh, but uh, an average of eight to ten dollars for just a simple embroidery uh, on the chest, um, and it get, gets down to as little as four dollars if you're uh, ordering more, and it gets as high as uh, sixteen to twenty dollars for just a chest if it's uh, very, very intricate. intricate. Uh, we do jacket backs that range from $40 to uh, $250. Uh, those and are, of course, machine, more involved. Machine or hand? Machine. So you, you're completely specialized in machine embroidery? Yes, okay. completely. Perfect, perfect. Thank you so much. So any, any, anything that you can share that you've seen post COVID again, like anything more, any, any other trends, any other specific uh, I, that are selling? Yeah, I agree with the gentleman that uh, aquatics are really starting to pick up in interest. Um, I've been working with uh, um, a game manufacturer and I've been embroidering their, um, their characters uh, game characters are, uh, they seem to be making a big pull. So things along those lines. Thank you. Thank you so much. So uh, just, uh, just to understand uh, uh, a little more about the bridal market, because I see a lot of, uh, see a lot of bridal boutiques and bridal, uh, bridal uh, designers who have signed up, who have come into a thing. So New York embroidery, do you work with bridal? I've been getting some of the brands uh, starting to develop some bridal pieces with us. Um, I definitely see, I mean, brides are, can't wait to get married. I'm all for that. So uh, no, definitely they're starting to develop that with us. But yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure they've been planning this before the pandemic and it hasn't happened for them and they're waiting for this moment. So. <laughs> Yeah, we're trying to get their orders starting and happening. So, <laughs> so do we do we have any bridal boutiques or bridal designers on on the on on a Zoom right now that want to speak up or tell us more about the bridal part? Because I know bridal is a uh, uh, an interesting part about the business. I see Angelic Angelic Bridal Boutique. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Uh, you'll have to unmute. We can't hear you. You have to unmute. You have to unmute yourself. Okay. Hi. Uh, so I'll be in my way to work. <laughs> okay. But, um, so my what I'm doing is a bridal and uh, more uh, for the bridal uh, embroidery. I do for the quinceañeras. The quinceañera dresses. This can be um, a lot embroidered and a lot of, um, uh, you know, flowers, uh, horses, and uh, this is what we're we doing for the quinceañeras right now. I, I think we can't see, uh, did, did everyone else see that? Because I think I missed a little bit of that. So can you just give us some more insight into the trends on the bridal? What are more brides wanting with embroidery now? So the brides, um, is, you know, the brides is not too much embroidery. So the more embroidery right now, this is from the quinceañeras dresses. Uh, because the, um, the bridal, the bridal uh, dresses, is, is, is can be a different, different embroidery. It's um, like simple embroidery, but no colorful, no, nothing uh, can be extended. Like, but the quinceañera dresses is can be colorful and it can make it with machine or it can make it by hand. So when it's uh, make it by hand, it can be a lot more, the prices go up. But when it's done with a machine, the prices go down. Where are you based? Where are you based? I'm being in Washington. Okay. Stay. In Seattle. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. 
Okay, anyone else want to tell us more about, uh, uh, give us some insight about the bridal embroidery? Anyone else? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Is it, can I? Because I'm, I'm, I only have like ten more minutes left, and I wanted to discuss this with you guys. Can you guys hear me well? Yes, perfect. Hi, I'm from Romania. I am a designer of fashion accessories, and what I can tell about the bridal, which was hard hidden, hard took a hard hit this year, is that um, I usually got requests of um, bridal gown designers um, asking me to design some accessories that they can put on their dresses. Um, this year, because all the designs have been more casual, more tafta, more um, satin, so not much embroidery, but still I have been asked to um, design uh, like belts, um, epaulettes, um, all sorts of details that can go just around the border, so not a full um, embroidery set or a full embroidery coupon. So I would say the trend for embroidery um, would go more on the um, details, uh, um, just here and there somehow. A lot of flowers, a lot of um, very feminine, um, but very, how do I say? Um, she cannot, uh, not too kitschy, so everything will be like um, uh, casual, but they would go with wallet and all the hair accessories, maybe some pins, so a lot more casual. Um, We're launching our new collection next uh, week, and even the fashion accessories I did for the new collection are ones that you will wear not only on the big day, but also have in your wardrobe and wear on a daily basis. So more casual and more, I think brides will invest in versatile and um, those kind of pieces they, they will wear um, not only once. So that would be a trend um, in my perspective, uh, getting more casual, more down to earth, more practical um and yeah no i'm i don't know if reinventing is the word but um just practical and chic feminine stuff that uh work with um work with more stuff than usually i hope thank you so you're, so you're based in romania yeah, in bucharest wow wonderful. yeah i'm really glad uh, i saw the email in time and i'm like okay before i go i gotta see what they're talking about well, we're so we're so glad that you made it, and it's it's great to see that we have so many people from all parts of the world, and you know that's what makes me happy that we connect people because then we know at least at least at Fashion Brain we're doing a good job, you know. So I say Mika Herrera, Thank London. You. I think you wanted to say something. Uh, hello, uh, Mika. hello. Can you guys hear me? Yes, yes. Hey, hello. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm so sorry. Uh, my camera is not working at the moment. Uh, but yeah, I would just like to, to share a, a little bit of our experience here in London. Uh, we do have a, a bridal store here, um, uh, right at the city center. And then we have another shop back in Santiago in Chile. Um, and we've seen a, a trend in terms of bridal. It's starting to pick up the business. So we were closed for most of 2020. Uh, and now we've seen it starting to reopen. We have uh, pushed our online presence a little bit during this time. And we still have a lot of interest from brides regarding uh, golden colors, uh, golden embroidery, <clears throat> and as well as what Katerini was saying, uh, flower shapes, those things are kind of picking up in terms of interest in, in our brides. We do see a lot of interest in hippie chic style wedding dresses, just like uh, very uh, light dresses, not so heavy. Um, that's something that's been a, a lot of interest on in the brides. Thank you. So, uh, so uh, are you? Are you? You do you see things? Do you see weddings happening is, since post COVID? Is there? You, I mean, is the activity happening now? What is your trend? What do you, I mean? What do you see? like happening in the industry right now? Well, the UK in general is reopening right now. So we should be fully open in July. Um, uh, the 
the PM is very keen in pushing the reopening of uh, the country. So we will probably be seeing a lot of events, uh, like even parties are going to be starting again in July. So um, uh, I think there's a, a very high potential regarding uh, bridal events. We do have a lot of uh, wedding fairs coming in September and October. They're all being confirmed. And uh, I mean, all the, the whole sector has been really pushed to the point it's like either we reopen now or basically the whole industry is just going to collapse itself. So I think, yeah, I mean. So do you, and, and do you, do you uh, do your, about, I'm just talking partic particularly about embroidery. Is your embroidery done in the UK itself or do you outsource it overseas? No, we, we actually outsource it. We work with, uh, with two companies, in, one in India and one in Asia. Okay, so for some of the other suppliers over here that would like to contact you, uh, if you leave your contact details on the chat, that would be great. Uh, I mean, I see a lot of suppliers here. I even see Raintree that does a lot of bridal embroidery uh, herself. Maybe she can give some of her thoughts, yeah, please. De yeah, definitely. I, I left a message before because I actually have to yeah. leave, but I would love to hear from anybody who would be interested in collaborating with us in any way. Okay, great. So Raintree, what is, what is your take on bridal? Um, I mean, there's no take. I think it's the it's been completely dependent on the situation. Uh, we we had one or two, I mean, actually they were uh, London-based uh, bridal designers. Um, there were like, there were two weddings literally in this entire year and it was all by the nick of literally, I don't know how they managed, but they did just before everything went into lockdown. So obviously people haven't really been able to do very big things, uh, but, but, you know, simpler versions. And I think that's what's happening right now. I do have to actually agree with the lady who spoke from Romania. The, the, I think she was also in bridal. I do think what's very interesting now is for people to um, be a little uh, realistic about uh, the situation with embroidery supplier, with, with designer, and, and find different ways to work because we do have issues. You never know when things are going to get hit again. You never know with the, the career service. And we do have to consider all of that. You know, when you're working with India, when you're working with New York, is my parcel going to reach on time? I do think uh, appliques, trims, I think uh, things that don't involve you basically shipping fabric all over. You know, I think it's very important to kind of... Um, just, just for a while to be a little realistic, you know, that's why I think people who are working within the whole uh, uh, applique trim, badges, I think this is a great time for you to kind of really push because you're not dependent on that other entire cycle of fashion to come in with the manufacturing and stuff, you know, and for the people who do need stuff like that, you know, you're getting your manufacture done, you're safe, secure with your garments with you, and then whatever you want to add on top, you know what I mean? It's not, it's not this another month added to it with so I think it's it's definitely an interesting way to look at at if you want to continue the cycle of working with people all over um it it, it, it and also cost wise that really really works well you can do really more expensive stuff rather than like full coverage um a very effective beautiful quality but your 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 the convenience of it, the cost convenience of it, the practicality of it now, I think is a very, very important thing to consider. Thank you, thank so, you. Uh, these are my thoughts, yeah. So That's Platinum it. Plus, you wanted to say something? No, it was it was more though of a question. When you took us into the bridal, it kind of blew my mind. I haven't done that yet. So would somebody please iterate on the type of backing that you use when you're doing a silky type dress and after the work is done, are you covering it with the um, like the thing, like a skin protector? Because I know a lot of wedding dresses are close to the skin to protect them from irritation from the back of the um, stitch work. So, can we have some of the specialists answer this question? I know, I, I know, a rain tree. You would know New York embroidery for sure. What is your take, Milad? Do you want to go for this? 
No, so for us, uh, we would use a fusing, but for bridal, that's the one. I mean, we we manufacture a lot of our clients' garments, but with bridal, I think every you know that's kind of made to measure, ready to wear. So we just do the embroidery and send it across. But I'm quite sure they would definitely uh, fuse and then have a backing of some of a lining, like like you know like a either artificial or satin lining or silk lining, something really. You know, you yeah. definitely never not have the raw uh, embroidery sure. thread work, whatever whatever work you're doing on the surface, you would, because also the finish, you want it to look as beautiful on the inside as you do on the outside. Yeah. I mean, I will add the same thing. Like you will need to back it for sure. Whether even if it's on the yoke and it's still on tool base, you still need to cl clean it with another layer of tool that is illusion. Uh, to have a really nice high-end look or luxury look. But as I, as Niha said, yeah, it has to be backed. Uh, you don't necessarily want to see the backing of the thread work or the beading. Uh, in some places, like let's say a sleeve or something, yes, I get it. Like it has to be um, with the, just one layer or even with a nude layer it would be great. But that's how most bridal gowns are made. And I see Madhu, can you add something on this? Because I know you have a lot of experience with manufacturing. Yeah, I think I agree with the panelists because what they, the rain tree especially, because I think she's, she's talking uh, the reality of the situation as also the Romanian uh, lady, you know, because yes, the, there are very few weddings though, but people who are getting married are not going into that so much of glitter or so much of embellishments as they were going. They are looking more for to accessorize it into something more glamorous so that the, uh, you know, re re realizing the reality of the situation and how it's so fluid, it may go either way. So they are more not getting it. Like you'll see the bells and the bags and, you know, even I've seen somebody even putting it something on their hand anklets, something very nice, you know, for the anklets and for the hand wrist, something so nice and exquisite that it just uplifts the whole thing so well. So that's where I think the trend is turning towards because I was talking to a person, to somebody and they reflected exactly the same thoughts that do not make the main dress so jazzy, but to lift it up with different frills all around. Uh, Platinum Plus, does that answer your question? Or do you need yes. a right. Very well. <laughs> yes. Very well. Yeah, actually, I just seminar. said in general, I didn't say about the backing and all. I'm sorry, because I just, uh, Thank I you. just got, you know, in the middle I was out because I'm sorry about that because I thought you were asking me in general. I'm so sorry about that. But yes, his question was they answered it all well. So the, I didn't have to add anything more to it, to be honest. So, yeah. Yes, there's no point duplicating things. I'm sorry. Huh? I just was answering in general. Oh, you answered perfectly. And that was a good idea is to visit a bridal um, store to look at the fabric and materials. And I get it. It's not the total dress of in details. It's the add-ons, and um, so I get it. Yeah, I can, the I can fabric see. they want is different now, not the one like they did before. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, so you know, like, like that's what we do at Fashion Bay, we connect people. You get your answers answered, and you know that makes us happy that we do something good. So, you know, like it's coming towards the end of, we got seven more minutes for our webinar. I just want to tell you a little bit about Fashion to Be In. So we, we're a trade show platform. We've been organizing shows. We go to all the sectors, you know, like we do fabrics, we do embroidery, and we basically make connections. If anybody's interested uh, to grow their business, uh, meet more contacts, uh, like how we got all of you here for all the clients who buy our membership. We basically grow their business, find them new business opportunities, get them more leads, and we do, and we set up B2B virtual meetings for them. So many, I mean, we're, we're based in London, but we work with people all around the world. 
Uh, we have clients from Africa to India to America, everywhere. And we make all our customers happy, you know? And I'm just going to get a, a, one of our sales agents. So another thing that we do is we connect companies with sales agents because that's another a way of how people can grow their business. You know, say you want to grow in the German market, you need a person in Germany to help you. Same if, if you want to, if you want to grow your business in Japan, you definitely need a Japanese person to help you sell there. You know, so so that's another thing that we do is we work with getting you agents, getting your distribution, and uh, in all fashion and lifestyle categories. So I'm just going to get one of our agents here from Louisiana, Onika. I see you here. Thank you for all your support. Hello, hi everyone. So what did you think about today's webinar and what, what, what feedback or any insights that you got or you want to share? Hello. It's breaking up. Yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you. Okay. Now, could you repeat it again? I couldn't hear. No, so I basically said, what did you think about today's webinar? And why don't you tell us more about some of the things that you see in America? Because, you know, it's funny because... When I speak to people all around the world, they always say one thing to me is help me grow my business in America. And I'm, I'm not just saying this. I'm not just saying this because I'm not just saying this and trying to flatter you guys. But you guys are in the hottest place in the world. You know, right now we you know, I mean, everybody wants to grow their business in America. You know, every single person I see like New York is hot right now. Every, everyone's like, listen, you got to, you, you know, so. Actually, Tarun, sorry, can I just interject there? Like, it's so funny you said that because as a company, the only thing I've survived on are like all my clients from New York. They have not stopped this entire time everywhere else. Not one peep from Europe, not one peep from, you know, Paris, Milan, London's been, I mean, nothing. Not I'll even go, I'll go. Come on, you can, you can York, add to this. New York has been just banging for me banging and I just I'm like from where because you know I, I mean I, I travel a lot there but it's just been so thank you guys if you're based there Milad hey what's up we had a chat too but um New York's been you know something happening over there so so I just see Nicholas right. Stitches you've joined us would you like to add something please any words of wisdom any thoughts you gotta unmute <laughs> Hi. Um, yes, my business is um, just really picking up. Things were uh, really slow for a while. But yeah, things are, are definite, definitely picking up right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, things are picking up. It's picked up for the last, uh, since February this year, I think, for us. And um, yeah. see, uh, our market is a little different, right? I mean, not different. We sell to a whole lot of customers. The catalog companies got strong throughout COVID. It's the mom and pop shops, the specialty store businesses that went down. Uh, the TV business, if you're selling to televisions, they their fashion goods weren't selling, but their knits were selling. They were going, you know, gangbusters. So, but uh, everyone's business was down, but how much and how much are we going to recover? And, you know, because there are holes in the market right now which you're going to fill, right? So. It's, um, it's a matter of maneuvering through all channels and trying to see where you can fill. Uh -huh. US business is going this way now. We are elevating. February this year was stronger than February two years back or even last year. You know, no. so. Are you serious? Exactly. Oh, this year? The, made it, us uh, survive, actually, to be honest. The US customers are the ones who made us sustain ourselves and let us pass through this bad phase because. Even though it wasn't totally dead like in Europe, they were pickling orders and now they've gone like quite good, very good there. U.S. is doing very let me, good. Let me ask you ladies something, uh, and gentlemen also. Um, like I said, I haven't done a wedding dress, but let's say I get a, a rush of uh, wedding dresses. Am I able to network with you guys to have you uh, do it as like a third party and then uh, send it back to me? Is anybody willing to do that? Of course. I mean, that's what these, that's what these suppliers do. Like Rain Tree does that. I know that. And a lot of other suppliers, they, 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 that's what they do. That's their business. They want to work with uh, design houses like you. So, you know what I mean? And, and you, and some of the things I'll just tell you, some of the things with embroidery, at least I've noticed uh, cannot be done in, in some of the work that they do in India and stuff cannot happen in America as much as even if you try, right. 
those are like traditions. It's like father generation that is, you know, who's taught their son and they've taught their kids, you know. So it's, 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 I mean, I mean, you should be in touch with Rain Tree. Any other, uh, any of the other uh, suppliers would want to uh, come up, please do. I see Anish, uh, Anish Ree, New York. Would you yes. like to say something? Well, I'm not in the um, embroidery space, I, but I just wanted to hear what was going on within that space. And I see that um, New York is really doing it for people, which is good. Um, so I don't really have too much to say about the embroidery. I think it's beautiful. And if we ever could use it within our business, um, in particular, a logo or so, we would definitely contact you know someone within the panel or someone within the um, the Zoom the Zoom community. But thank you. So, as we're coming towards our end, is there anyone else would like to say something? I mean, New York embroidery says New York's been the hot hot uh, hot word for today's webinar. I would like to end with your final words of wisdom. But anyone else before? Before we close today's session, would like to like say something fashionite. I know you've been awfully silent. Would you like to add a few bits? I have given my introduction in the chat also. And before also I introduced that we are in the embroidery business from last 35 years. And although we worked in the past with Elko also who is sitting and joining in with us between us. And from last 35 years, we are in this business and anything related to embroidery, that's our strength we can handle it, any kind of embroidery based out of India. Thank you, thank you so much. So, uh, I mean, it's five o'clock here in London. We're gonna to end today's session. Thank you all for being here. It was it was a real pleasure to get so many people from all parts of the world. And I mean, uh, listen, New York Embroidery, Platinum Plus, uh, and all, and uh, Rain Tree, Alka, thank you so much, you know, all of you all for your, you know, your, your really uh, impressive words. I'm sure a lot of the uh, panelists and other attendees have gained so much from today's thing. I think Madhu also really added, I don't know, Madhu, you didn't put your video on today, but you know, it was, oh, you did for a little bit, but yeah. Uh, thank you again for all your, uh, all your, um, all your um, words and your advice, you know? So before we end- mine. It was enjoyable, it's a very enjoyable session, very knowledgeable. And I found like people people here are pretty knowledgeable and you get to learn a lot. Thank you so much. Okay, so just before we uh, close, I'm just gonna get West Coast Imports. Actually, West Coast Imports is uh, one of our featured, uh, one of our featured uh, pan panelists. You know, he's one of our uh, members as well. Why don't you tell us, sir, I think, I believe your name's Tanvir? Yes, it is. Yes, sir. So why don't you tell us more about what you do with embroidery? I know we come towards the end of our webinar, but we're going to give you three, four minutes. Just tell us more about what you do. You know, we are so a company based in Bombay, India. We have been working for the last 35 years in the sphere of providing embellishments to fashion houses based all over Europe and uh, USA. We work with the likes of Armani, Versace, and a lot of other clients. So basically, we do high-end embroideries for fashion houses based all over the world. We work in that sphere. We are an ISO 9001-0015 certified company, a dad, Duns and Bradstreet listed company. We work within the reach parameters. So we work with uh, high fashion couture and ready to wear collections with the top brands of the world. We work with Balma, we work with Valentino, we work with a lot, Elisa. So we do a lot of this kind of work. So basically our sphere is we design uh, uh, the collections for the embroideries and the beadings, working with the design team of the designers. We develop a collection and then uh, we go take it forward and then we do the production for them as well. So we do embroidery panels, then we do the stitch dresses as well. So we do bridal wear, we do couture, we do ready to wear, we do accessories like bags, shoes, anything that needs beading, we do that. Anything that needs embroidery, we do that. So it's hand embroidered uh, and it is uh, made to the, to the likes of the designers. The quality control is precisely very, very precise. So the basic thing is uh, pricing and qu the quality and uh, uh, and the finishing is what we pride ourselves in. 
So for that. Just, so just to give a I know, I know we I'm just gonna I'm just gonna ask everyone if they have like five more minutes so we can just extend a little more because I just want to understand a little bit about pricing from you. Like can you just tell us more about how do you price your 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 when you when a customer comes to you, gives you a design, how do you how do you price it? Like what is your strategy? The pricing uh, in, in embroideries depends on the amount of man hours and the material used. For instance, I could be using uh, uh, Swarovski crystals and uh, from Austria, and I could be using maybe semi-precious stones for a for a certain client who wants the the creme. That like like let's say if I was doing something for a Dolce Gabbana, they want to use semi-precious stones and Swarovski. So the price would depend on that, and everything is hand beaded. So everything would depend on the man hours, the material use, the kind of work that you put in into that embroidery or creating that design. So it, it that is what pricing is about. In this sphere, the pricing depends on what you put into the, this thing. It could be anything to anyone. And you want to knock down the prices, you make it more simpler, as simple as that. So it depends on what the client is looking at. There is, this is not a kind of a thing where you make something and you say, okay, uh, we will give it for this much, but the pricing can be worked upon with uh, with uh, the client. So that's that's another look at it. So basically, if anybody is interested in in embroidery, uh, also want to look at another supplier, uh, Mr. Tanvir, uh, please leave your contact details on the chat. You know, I'm, I'm, I feel it's really sad that you missed. You came towards the I'm end. I'm sorry. It's but, uh, uh, the month of Ramadan, and in India, we just had the the evening time now. So I had to come home and with the family, and uh, the timing was a little off. But I managed to <laughs> join you in the this thing. Anyway, I look forward. I'll leave it. I, I'll I'll put on my details uh, on the chat, and then. Anybody and, we, and we'll connect you with everyone. We'll, we'll connect you with everyone who was here today. Right. We'll connect you with everyone. Yeah. Else. So uh, as as our as our, as our event is ending today, final words from New York Embroidery. Thank you, sir. All Your right. final words. We want to know. Perfect. I just wanted to say we're stronger together, and I'm so happy and glad that I was part of this webinar. And thank you for hosting it. And uh, yeah, I think uh, all together being uh, aware of our struggles will only help us grow and support each other. So thank you so much for making this happen. So thank you again, everyone. And I hope everyone uh, got something from today's webinar. because That's what makes us happy, like I keep saying. As, as long as you got something, it was productive for you, keeps us going, OK? So mm -hmm. thank you. Be safe. And again, we'll see you next Thursday uh, for, uh, for, I don't know what's happening. Next Perfect. Thursday. We'll see you next Thursday. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Bye-bye. Bye, thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.